Within species, smaller individuals tend to live longer and appear to age more slowly. And it's important here to recognize what we're talking about is adult body size controlling for things like obesity. So obesity obviously is a is a is something that can affect longevity and I would say there's reason to believe that obesity may accelerate many aspects of biological aging, but that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about adult body size independent of abnormal weight or obesity, okay? So this would be typically measured by height in a human or length in certain animals, but not necessarily body weight or adiposity or, or body composition in, in any way, okay? So really we're talking about the, the frame of the adult individual. And adult body size is largely determined during development. And it's determined by a combination of genetic, epigenetic, and environmental factors. And I think it's safe to say that that perhaps the most important environmental factor that is going to determine adult body size is going to be nutrient status, how much food is around and what is the type of food that's around. And perhaps the most important environmental factor is nutrient availability and in particular protein availability. And again, the amount of food that is in the environment during development seems to play a particularly significant role in determining adult body size at the individual level within a species. Um, so one maybe useful way to think about this is genetics will set kind of the upper bound on what an individual's adult body size can be. And environment and food in particular is really what determines how close to that upper bound an individual will come. And I think related to that, another way to think about this is that adult body size is determined by some key hormones and their abundance during development. And these, again, are gonna be hormones that are influenced a lot by nutrition. Things like growth hormone and insulin-like growth factor one play a major role in determining body size during development. And so again, levels of these hormones are influenced by genetics and that can sort of set the, the maximum achievable upper bound, but then they're going to be profoundly influenced by the environment during development. That could be in utero during pregnancy, or it could be during early formative uh, time of development uh, post-pregnancy. Both of those things can play a role in the determination of adult body size. Okay. So again, I think let's start with dogs because that's something that most people are familiar with. And most people are familiar with the idea that big dogs age faster than small dogs. Again, go back to the Great Dane Chihuahua example. A Great Dane is going to age about twice as quickly as a Chihuahua will, has about a tenfold difference in body size. Um, so if we look across all breeds, we see this is a nice linear relationship again. But here it's interesting to note it's not a log-log plot, it's a linear-linear plot. So if we plot average breed lifespan on the y-axis and adult body size or body mass on the x-axis, we get a pretty reasonable linear correlation. Um, and again, I, I make this point because when we look across species, remember, it's a log-log plot. When we look within species, it's a linear-linear plot. And again, I don't know what that means at a biological level, sort of explanatory level, other than the mechanisms appear to be different, right? And that's not shocking, <laughs> but, uh, but it's worth appreciating that this relationship also is mathematically different. And as is the case when we look across species, it seems to be not only lifespan that is influenced by body size, but rate of aging. Again, think about dogs. Big dogs seem to age biologically faster when we look at many different tissues and organs, functional declines, diseases of aging compared to small dogs. That's true for arthritis and kidney disease and heart disease and cancer in particular. Um, we see all of those things happen at an earlier chronological age in large dogs compared to smaller dogs. I think the one interesting example that runs counter to that, at least in dogs, is dementia. So from the Dog Aging Project data, it seems like big dogs do not show age-related cognitive decline at an accelerated rate compared to small dogs. And so that's interesting, and it suggests to me that there may be something 
different about aging in the brain versus aging in the rest of the body. And again, my speculation is it comes back to these same hormones that I was alluding to earlier, growth hormone, insulin, IGF-1 signaling in the brain may have a different impact on cognitive function and dementia in the brain compared to in the rest of the body. But that's just speculation at, at this point. Okay. So as I alluded to earlier, many people seem to think this relationship is unique to dogs, and it's not. So this has been seen in mice. Multiple studies have seen in wild-type mice. If you look at the individual level, that uh, bigger individuals have a shorter lifespan in mice. Um, one paper from Rich Miller, who is one of the leads of the NIA interventions testing program, was titled Big Mice Die Young, Early Life Body Weight Predicts Longevity in Genetically Heterogeneous Mice. For you, those of you who are mouse longevity aficionados, this is using the UM-HET3 strain that the, the interventions testing program uses, but other studies have seen this same relationship. So in mice, it seems to be the case that smaller individuals live longer. Um, and this is also true in humans. Um, it, it's a little bit tricky in humans in part because there are social consequences and potentially economic consequences that go along with height. So again, in general, I think it's recognized that taller height is associated with some socioeconomic advantages compared to shorter height. Um, and so that complicates things in people because of course we know that socioeconomic status will have an impact on longevity. Um, but even considering that, multiple studies have seen that smaller individuals tend to live longer and tend to have lower rates of multiple age-related diseases when comparing by chronological age. So it really does seem to be the case that small individuals in humans also age more slowly than large individuals. It's just that that delta is pretty small and probably countered somewhat by the socioeconomic um, complications associated with height in humans. Okay.